Hi everybody, Steven here. So uh, in this one, uh, this is part four of my VMware Cloud Foundation series or, or playlist. And what this one's gonna be covering is the bring up process. How do we get things installed now? So we're finally ready for that. So stick around, we'll see you in a bit. Hi everybody, thanks for sticking around. So in this video, we're actually gonna now deploy our, our, our management workload domain, okay? So we've, uh, let me get my uh, little iPad and webcam going here. So we deployed our appliance, which I did, I showed you that in the video. We created our spreadsheet. Again, I just recently showed you that. I'm gonna import that into this. We're gonna validate the spreadsheet and the, conf and the environment, and then we're gonna deploy uh, to our host. Now my hosts are already deployed. Let me go to my desktop here. Uh, some of you could be asking, what, what's my environment? This again, I'm running my stuff on VMware Workstation. You could probably figure that out. Uh, I actually have two different machines. I got a, uh, one called Dell 1 and I got another one called Dell, well, we could probably guess at a Dell 2, right? Um, these are all running Windows and um, I got basically about you can see the, the processor I have here, i9-10900. Um, uh, but basically we got four and um, uh, four and five, we've got 20, 20 um, logical processors, which is not bad. In memory, I got about 128 gigs. And it's all solid state drives. This, is, I got two of these and I'm spreading it across the two, which really pushes the limits of it. This is very, very restraining on resources. I'm actually gonna build another server, but I'll bring you folks through that. If you look at my, my VMs, I've got one site A03, site A04. Uh, if I look at the hardware that makes up the VMs, you'll actually see I've got 64 gigs of memory per ESXi host, 16 processors. Um, I got a 30, 30 gig boot disk. I've already installed ESXi. I got a 100 gig disk here and another uh, one terabyte disk here. This will be for vSAN, okay? 100 gig will be for the cache and then this one will be for the, for the, the capacity drive, right? Again, really basic environment to just get this thing up and running and that's it. I'm not gonna be able to really do any work with it. So I got four servers deployed like that. So I've deployed my, my SXI servers. I've set up NTP on all four. I've set up the management IP addresses, that set up the proper gateways. I set up DNS, sorry, DNS on them. I uh, set up my NTP, I don't know if I said that already. Uh, so DNS and NTP, all that stuff has to be set up because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through the validation process and if this stuff is not set up, it's gonna fail or it'll give me a warning. So let's do that, let's, uh, let's rock and roll. What, um, what machine do I wanna be on here? Do I wanna be on uh, this one? I think it's Dell 2 I'm supposed to be on. Yeah, that's the one I'm supposed to be on. Okay, so let's uh, get my cloud builder. Let's connect to the cloud builder. So we've already deployed that in the video, right? So I'm basically site a dash cloud builder dot vclass dot local. And I'm gonna log in as in my admin and my password for that. And then I can say not now. Now it's asking me what platform. I showed you this when I deployed the cloud builder. I'm just doing a straight plain cloud builder foundation. It's not VxRail or anything like that. I'm just gonna click next. So up here it comes up and tells me all the prereqs. It gives you everything that you need to basically do, right? So uh, again, you can scroll through here. So you gotta read through all this, make sure everything is done. Uh, I'm just gonna say, yes, I have reviewed this and I'm ready to rock and roll. And I'm gonna click on next. Now it says download and complete the deployment parameter worksheet. I think in 4.5 and earlier, you were able to download that spreadsheet or worksheet, the deployment worksheet from here. Looks like they got rid of it in version five. Uh, so you gotta go to your MyLearn, my VMware, not MyLearn, my, my VMware account, your support account or Broadcom account now and download it from there. Um, again, I'm a VMUG Advantage member not endorsing that but uh, that's where I got it from right so I'm gonna go next it's telling me to select the file now I'm gonna go select file and at that point remember we did that spreadsheet in the last video so that spreadsheets right there WCF50 Steve um, notice it says ask me I could pick a JSON file or a Excel so we didn't do a JSON I'll save that for another video um, so I'm gonna say okay open that one 
So it's going to validate that that spreadsheet's okay, like it's not corrupted or anything like that or something. So it looks, configuration looks okay, all right? So I'm going to go next. Now at this point, it's validating my environment, okay? So it's looking at that spreadsheet, making sure the spreadsheet's okay. It's going to be checking various parameters in there. Oh, uh, you've got ESXi01 at this DNS, right? Let's let's check that hosting. Let's look at forward and reverse lookups. I actually was doing this um, a, a while back, and I actually had, just while I was running through this, uh, I actually got an error on one of mine saying there's no reverse lookups for one of my hosts. I'm like, what? And I've been running that for years. And I didn't realize it. So this thing picked up on it, which is uh, kind of uh, kind of cool when you think about it. So it's actually going through validating everything, okay? So everything over here looks okay. If there's a hard problem, it will say failed. Um, notice over here on the left, it shows me the history, okay? So right now, this is my first time doing this. But let's say there was a problem here. I go, oh, shoot, I must have made a typo in the spreadsheet. So I'll go and fix the spreadsheet, go back, and then say, okay, here, um, you know, reload the spreadsheet and try again, okay? And it will show you the history of all the ones that you've tried. Uh, you, you also, you'll see this retry button down here. Maybe it was something like, I don't know, maybe you, your gateway wasn't pingable and you realized, oh shoot, it's turned off, right? So you could turn it on and say, here, retry, right? It'll go in and retry. You can download this as well if you want. This, once it's done, you go, oh, it looks like we got a whole whack load of problems. Let's download this, and then um, uh, then we can check off each, fix each problem as we go along. Notice I got a warning on my host configuration. NTP server on that does not match the one provided with, uh, oh, interesting, yes. So it's it's giving me a warning. It's because I think I used an IP address there. Uh, that's uh, I'll have to check that out. That's interesting. While that's doing its thing, I'm just going to open up another browser, right? Let's go to my site a-esxi-01bclass.local. So I'm connecting directly to my ESXi server. Maybe I used an IP address. But you notice it gave me a warning. It will let me continue on, but if this was production, I'd say, okay, I need to fix this, right? Which I could actually do if I want to. Oops, wrong password. If I go into manage date and time at NTP settings, see the pool.ntp.org. Hey, hey, that's the right one. It should be okay. I must, I might have made a typo on my spreadsheet. I'll have to check that out. Let's see what the error says here. So it's going through. So that's not really a showstopper, but I would probably want to fix this host does not match or provided with the configuration for all reason. Oh, I think there's a, an issue with the space. I'll have to go back and check that. I'm going to let it go through the validation stuff. Well, for the most part, it's going to be okay. It's just checking that settings. I know that host got the proper time synchronization. So let's see what we go through here. Probably for the purposes of this video, I'll just say, yeah, okay, whatever, and continue. Uh, it's checking this. It's going to check the vSAN network connectivity as well. So, again, it's going through checking everything here. This takes a few minutes, so I'll probably just let this run, and then uh, we'll take it from there. I'll probably speed this up. Okay, so we see they got some errors here, or warnings, I should say. It talks about the host configuration and then the time synchronization here. No remote NTP exists for host uh, in SA Cloud Builder. Interesting, I thought, um, thought that one had it. Anyways, I'm not gonna worry about the Cloud Builder, but these ones here, I actually did make a mistake. If I go to my spreadsheet, let's show the spreadsheet here. Probably a good thing I did a mistake here. You get to see me do it, right? Um, it's not supposed to be one dot, CA and 2.CA, it's supposed to be 0 0.1, 0 0.CA, and 1.CA. So I'm going to save that again. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to, all right. So it's saved it now. And I'm going to, let's go back now. Like, oh, okay, I messed up. Let me fix that. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go next. 
And I'm going to select the file, reload that spreadsheet. That was the right one I got. And then let it go through and revalidate that again. So I'm not going to bore you with that whole thing. I'll probably speed this up right now. Okay, so we're back. Um, so that was the problem. Again, it came up time synchronization. No remote NTP exists for uh, the cloud builder, right? Now, I'm going to go back to the previous one that we did. Notice cloud builder configuration validation was successful, but my host uh, messed up. It's saying uh, the host is using 0.ca.pool.whatever and, and 1.ca.pool for the NTP, but the spreadsheet is saying 1.ca and 2.ca. So it's saying, hey, your your host is using this set of NTP servers. The spreadsheet's saying this. It's giving me a warning. Uh, you'd have to fix. I don't know why it's giving me a warning because I don't want it applying that incorrect configuration to, let's say, an NSX or something. Um, so we went in and we fixed it and we ran it and we see the host configuration is now okay. But it does now generate a uh, configuration on the Cloud Builder, which I'm not too concerned with because technically I'm going to do this build and I throw away Cloud Builder. It's saying, oh, your NTP configuration on Cloud Builder is using this set of NTP servers that don't really match the spreadsheet set. Technically speaking, it's a warning. It will let me proceed. That's okay. I've actually done it before, but uh, you know, again, probably in a production environment, I would say, oh, I made a mistake. Let me reconfigure Cloud Builder to use the proper NTP or whatever, right? But for me, no big deal here, but at least you get to see it shows you your history and you can go back and fix it, right? So now at this point here, um, I say acknowledge the, the errors. And now at this point here, if I click on next, it comes up and says, uh, select deploy at SDDC to begin the deployment of the VCI, uh, VMware Cloud Foundation. So once you begin the deployment, you cannot stop the process. If you're not ready yet, select cancel. So if you go, oh, I still want to make some fixes and changes, you got to cancel, okay? If I hit this deploy SDC now, it's going to deploy my management work group. So let's do it. So it's, it's now deploying my management workload uh, domain here. Uh, notice it's uh, it's validating thumbprints. It goes through a pretty extensive list here, right? Now, this is not gonna take 30 minutes to do. This will probably take, this is gonna take three hours, four hours to do, depending on your environment. It's, you notice all the stuff it's going through, checking lockdown mode, adding new users, all this kind of stuff, right? Uh, so notice over here, deploy vCenter server. You got a section, deploy vCenter server. Then you got to create vSphere cluster. Then you got management cluster creation, post management, whatever, enable cluster services, apply host license keys. So it's going through a whole bunch of different sections here. Deploy and configure NSX is where I really wanted to show you. Um, if this is going to mess up right now, it's going to mess up there. Because uh, generally, I have enough resources for it to deploy vCenter server and set that up. That's pretty easy. but. NSX Manager, for those of you that are familiar with NSX have watched my videos, those NSX Manager appliances can be pretty demanding and they have um, memory res a reservation set at full capacity of the memory, right? So uh, if it's going to fail, it's probably going to fail there. So what I normally do is, okay, right now it's still going through, it says in progress, whatever, I'll come back here in another hour or so. And then uh, once I see that vCenter has been deployed and it's starting to deploy NSX, I can actually log into the vCenter then and watch it deploy the NSX. And if there's any problems, I can actually check it out from there, right? So basically at this point, it's just a waiting game, right? Uh, it's one of those things where you don't want to be clicking this and clicking that and messing around with this. This is something you basically say, I'm going home early for the day. You come back and check the next day. I'm not endorsing that, by the way, but anyhow. Um, I'm going to let this run. And for me, it's going to be before five hours later. But for you folks, it's going to be... Okay, everybody. Um, we can see it's deploying. I just want to get to this stage here. Deploying configure NSX. You actually see it going through... Um, so I should be able to go into my vCenter server because it deployed successfully. I should be able to log into that. So this is one thing I could do. Uh, let's go into it and let's log in as administrator. It. I'll type in my password for the administrator. I'll tell it not to update. Give it a few seconds. It may be a little bit too busy right now. 
But this is, again, you could use this as part of troubleshooting that something happened, it failed during the NSX deployment. So you can actually see it's deploying the managers one, two, and three. So this, my environment is getting pounded right now. Um, so, um, so this is kind of cool. If there's a problem here, uh, it would show up. So I could actually kind of leave this open. Don't mess with things. Don't cancel this, cancel that. Just leave it alone. So I'm just going to go back to here and then um, let it finish. So we'll see it when it's done. Okay, we can actually see that my NSX manager is deployed successfully. All right, download and de or deploy and configure NSX. Uh, looks like it's doing the join. Looks like it's creating the NSX cluster here, join NSX manager. So that's in progress. If I go to my vCenter server, you'll actually see there's my three NSX managers. They're obviously complaining about CPU resources because I'm pushing things a bit here. Uh, so anyways, I'm just going to go back to here and let it run some more. Okay, everybody, we're back and it looks like it was a successful install, right? You've seen success all the way down. It says uh, deployment of Cloud Foundation is successful. So woo, uh, it took about three hours or so. Um, but again, it, did, it managed to do the install in my environment. Um, so you'll notice again, you can expand these things and get more detailed. You can download this report. I personally don't care about it. Probably in a production environment, I would do that. Uh, I could print it. Again, I don't care in my lab environment. That's about it. And I would just click on finish now. And at that point, it says uh, VMware Cloud Foundation Proactive Support. I can say go ahead and launch the SDDC Manager. I'll do a separate video on that. I'm going to kill this. I'm going to go into my vCenter and we'll see what it deployed. So there is my vCenter server, I, my four hosts, I already deployed those, I showed you those at the beginning of the video. You see I've got some resource pools here and you'll see uh, you see the SDDC management resource pool. If I go in there, you see my NSX managers, you see three of them, okay? You see the uh, SDDC manager, which I'll do a separate video on that, and you see my vCenter server there. And if I click on here, this is my vSAN data store here that's the name of it all from the uh, deployment spreadsheet which we did back in the other video if I click on networking here you'll see I should have let's go into here management networks you'll see I have two distributed switches and the various port groups on them right uh, then my second one again from my deployment worksheet that we did in the previous video I think that was part three um, we did we had the second the second distributed switch for vSAN all the other stuff is for um, uh, NSX and whatnot. Um, but that's basically about it. I'm going to blow this away and redo it. Why? Because I've got three NSX managers here and this is killing my environment. So uh, what I'm going to do my next video, and by the way, if you've stuck around this long, thanks a lot. Um, you know, please support the channel by subscribing to it. Hit that subscribe button. And if you found this entertaining, please hit that thumbs up, the likes. It makes a big difference with the YouTube algorithms. Uh, my next video, um, it will. I'll probably show you how to deploy your um, management, so your management um, 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 workload uh, with only three, with only a single NSX manager. You don't want to do that in production, but again, in the lab environment, you want to save resources, and I need to save resources here, so I'm going to wipe this out and do it all over again. But that's it. Thanks a lot for sticking around, and we'll see you in the next one. Leave comments and questions down below. Bye now.